So today we're going to talk about love attachment styles, and I'm going to share my perspective on this. So if you're not familiar with love attachment styles, highly recommend reading the book Attach by Amira Levine and Rachel Heller. Okay. Why is this critically important for those of you that are seeking a significant romantic relationship? is because based on this information, there's a good chance that many of you are experiencing either anxious attachment style or avoidant attachment style. And what this means is how we attach to another person beyond the physical attractiveness. See, many of us hyper-focus on a physical attraction as our entryway into a relationship. And while there's some merits to that, because you want to feel a sense of chemistry, a sense of connection with someone, actually, there might be something underneath going on. And what I mean by underneath in our subconscious that might be going on, that's precluding us from having a significant relationship. In fact, in many cases, our love attachment style might be sabotaging our romantic relationships. Okay. So from my perception, I believe a significant percentage of women are what's known as anxious attachment style. And a significant percentage of men are known as avoidant attachment style. Okay. What I mean by this is anxious oftentimes gets, um, has a, you know, a fear of losing love of losing connection with someone. And what happens is they internally, there's so much uh, inner conflict going on that there almost becomes a point where they need, they're dependent upon attention, dependent upon security in the relationship that they oftentimes smother another person, okay? They might overwhelm the other person. They might incessantly text. They might... Um, be requesting to have their needs met on almost an in on a on a overwhelming perspective okay now an avoidant person most likely in um well i'll talk about their child an avoidant person when they're receiving you know attention from another person they wall up they they go inward because they have a fear of being overwhelmed they have a fear of losing their autonomy okay now, if it's true that women tend to be more anxious and men tend to be more anxious, uh, it doesn't mean that this doesn't go the other way around. You know, men can be anxious, women can be a, a avoidant. And it made me think of my own personal experiences because I am completely aware I have what's known as an anxious, a love attachment style. Now, I think this was birthed out of a couple experiences in my life. First off, my mother had a propensity to emotionally abandon myself and my, my siblings and my father during the early stages of my upbringing. And what happened is she would emotionally abandon us and I would feel like I did something wrong. So to, to get my mother's attention, I'd be like, mom, look at me, look at me, look at me. And I'm saying this, you know, kind of not literally speaking. And in that, I became an anxious attachment style. What I mean to say is I was, a, you know, there was an abandonment of love and then I kept chasing it. So that became where I needed it to feel safe in that moment. And it didn't occur. So I have a propensity that the minute someone stonewalls, the minute someone isn't giving love, from my perception of what that is, I oftentimes become anxious, okay? Now, avoidant, I believe one of the significant causes for being avoidant is the person, the little child, boy or girl, couldn't fully express themselves because when they did, they were shut down. They were told to, like for men, they were told to man up, be a man, don't show emotions. And for, for little girls, it could have also been something similar. In other words, they couldn't be their authentic self and they were shut down by one or both of their caregivers being a parent, okay? Now, another thing that happened in my child and in particular, um, that I, I think this relates to when, uh, you know, because we have our relates to when we were in school. When I was in school, I was picked on significantly. I wasn't picked for games first. So all of those emotions that happened in school started to rewire my brain, not trusting love, feeling anxious, feeling, you know, un, un, um, 
unappreciated. I mean, the, the list of words can go on and on and on, which, which helped kind of wire who I am as an adult. And so ultimately where I'm at uh, or where I've been at is an anxious person. Now, I know a lot of kids in school were probably shut down, ridiculed, embarrassed for whatever reasons that this happens. You get picked on. I know, you know, when we're, we're little babies, we all play together. But at a certain point, people start to form groups with one another in school. And all of those experiences might cause someone to be emotionally avoidant. What that means to say is they're not necessarily, as an adult, overly expressive because if they expressed who they were, they were shut down for it. Okay. So I'm trying to give you kind of a um, cliff note version of love attachment styles and how this might manifest as an adult is um, the anxious person tends to need lots of validation to feel security and safety. And the avoidant is afraid to give security and safety to another person because they don't trust the, the connection. They don't trust love. So this is this weird push-pull that happens within a lot of couples, okay? Now, I'm keenly aware of this because I know that most likely my partner in my relationship, there's a picture of my significant relationship, we live together. Um, she probably is uh, what we'd classify as an avoidant and I'd classify myself as an anxious, okay? You know what I don't like about this? I don't like the labels. As if anxious or avoidant is something bad. You know, when you think about it, I didn't choose to have these experiences growing up that caused me to become who I am. And I'm sure my, my sweetheart didn't choose her experiences that caused her to become who she is. And so and there, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with being anxious or avoidant. And I think we all would like to consider ourselves. I didn't mention this in the earlier stages. There's anxious, avoidant and secure. Secure is that you feel a sense of safety and trust in the relationship uh, where you don't want to flight uh, and you don't want to fight, okay, or freeze, okay? Most, In fact, most everybody believes they're a secure attachment style. If you took the test online, most everybody answers the questions in such a way that they believe they're secure. That's my perception anyway. But I truly believe that we have a default or one or the other. Okay, now, could an anxious sabotage a relationship with a partner? Could their, their need for validation, their need for connection overwhelm the other person? Yeah, that could absolutely happen. Here's what I actually think happens, and I think it's why I particularly understand my clients so well is because I tend to be, as I said earlier, an anxious attachment style. I think what's happening is that we choose partners to trigger our wounds so we can actually heal that wound within ourselves. Let me repeat that. We choose partners that trigger our wounds and it's an opportunity to heal ourselves. So if I did attract, um, and again, I'm, I'm, I don't want to characterize, you know, avoidant is bad, but if I attracted someone who happens to be avoidant, the from a spiritual perspective, why I did that was to heal that part of me that doesn't love myself, that doesn't love myself. And I think possibly why my partner chose me is to trust that, you know, there are there you can be your authentic self and that's OK. You can be your authentic self and that's OK. So given that women tend to attract more avoidant, and we also understand that men aren't necessarily all avoidant, they just might be slightly emotionally constipated. And what I mean to say is they have difficulty expressing themselves to their partner, okay? And it doesn't necessarily mean, again, that they're going to end the relationship because they don't trust love enough yet. Okay. So with that said, first and foremost is to recognize if you believe you're an anxious and if you're with an avoidant, first off, there's nothing wrong with the other person and there's nothing wrong with you. Okay. There's nothing wrong. We are beautiful human beings 
on this journey of, I believe, learning to love ourselves. In fact, I wrote a book about it, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Work. You can get it on Amazon, or you can go to the link below to check out my book. I often ask myself, why did I write this book? It's because we teach what we most have to learn. This is something, you know, and I'm only sharing my experience because maybe you can relate to this. This self-love is really the capacity to give ourselves a big gigantic hug whenever we're feeling fear, whenever we're feeling insecurity, when whenever we're feeling anxious, whenever we're out of our alignment to our inner peace. Self-love is just simply an, um, giving yourself an injection of love whenever you're feeling, you know, not fully whole, not fully present, not fully uh, engaged in life because your thoughts start to overwhelm you. And I say this from my own personal experience, and this is true if you're an avoidant or an anxious love attacher. So what can you do? First and foremost, awareness is 80% of the, the path to healing, being aware, okay? Number one, being aware of what it is, okay? Number two is when you get triggered for whatever reason, whatever make, okay, like if my partner doesn't text right away, as an example, okay? It's not that they've abandoned the relationship. You're not going to die. So number two is to recognize that the trigger is an opportunity to go to the mirror and give yourself some love. See, that's what's really happening. Rather than trying to change the other person's behavior, rather than trying to say, you need to do this so I can feel good about myself, go to the mirror and just really look at yourself and say, I'm giving, I'm giving me some love right now. I am the, I, I am the soother of my anxiety. I am the person who can heal this. Now, I don't want to dismiss the fact that many of you could be in a relationship with someone who's just not aligned with you, and they may not be able to, may not be capable of being on this journey with you. And so it might mean that you need to end this relationship. That's certainly a possibility. But at the same time, this person came in your life, both of you came in your life to heal one another. I think relationships have, have two components to it. I think one is the companionship com component that life is better with company and doing things together, whether it's physical intimacy with one another, whether it's social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, whether it's spending time with family and friends. I think those are important integral parts in building a relationship with someone. In addition, I think we choose relationships to heal the wound within ourselves that happened in childhood, and we choose partners that activate us. So when you get triggered, it's actually an opportunity to heal oneself. How do we heal ourselves? Certainly, as I said before, doing practices, a mindfulness practice of recognizing that whenever you feel triggered, that's an opportunity to go to the mirror and give yourself love, okay? Now, what I want to encourage everyone to do is share these things with your partner. See, with an avoidant person, if you begin to share that it's not their fault, it's not their responsibility to make you feel good about yourself, that you are aware that this is something that you work on within yourself. If you do that, by sharing this with your partner, actually, this can create a bond. This can create trust with your partner. And if they're open to looking at their own um. Not well, I was going to say behaviors, but their own actions, their own um, inner dialogue that's going on. If this, if by sharing yours, it creates an opportunity for them to look inside of themselves, maybe the two of you can begin to work on this together in a mindful practice by actually having deeper dialogue. Now, one of the challenges with people today is they're actually not forming an integrated relationship with one another. I'm gonna repeat that, they're not forming an integrated relationship with one another. These days, dating is a long protracted, casual type of, in, 
uh, relationship because people aren't truly integrating each other into their lives, okay? In the case of my sweetheart and I, we moved in together. That's a big integration uh, with, with one another into each other's lives. When you're actually spending months, if not years, living in your separate homes, getting together on occasion, you might be experiencing the anxious avoidant together, but there's not enough roots of integration to actually begin the process of saying, let's actually work on this together. Many people are just uh, living life on um, a surface level. What I mean to say is they spend time together, then they go back to their respective homes. Now, for some, for some it's actually uh, warranted because they're raising children. They don't want to integrate that with the other person. That's, you know, un that is understandable. At the same time, these part-time casual relationships oftentimes don't build the deep roots of trust to actually work on this part of our lives where we need to heal that part of us that doesn't love ourselves. This is, this is what we're faced with. You know, it's interesting. I was watching a video the other day and it talked about dating, you know, 50 years ago. It's just all about playing with each other and having a good time. And it's very surface level. And today's dating is a questionnaire to find out how deeply wounded a person is, <laughs> find out about their past relationships, because you're, it, you're basically vetting this person to decide if you want to go on this ride. Well, is there some merit to doing that? Well, I think the merit for having deeper conversations sooner rather than the let's just have a good time and then figure this stuff out. I think by having these deeper conversations earlier on, you might find yourself um, getting a, getting building a relationship with someone because you're doing it from a foundation of vulnerability, authenticity, and transparency. Let me repeat that. You're building the early stage of relationship through vulnerability, authenticity, and transparency. And, and with that, if it doesn't work out, you actually can detach from the relationship much easier because you've done it from a conscious perspective instead of this unconscious way most people are dating today, which is based on attachment. My coffee mug says, I don't want to work anymore. I just want to be cherished, put up on a pedestal and taken care of. This was a gift uh, to me. Thank you so much to my friend who gave this to me. Why am I sharing all this today? I recognize that while many of you watch my content and you see the relationship I have there, you know, every relationship has their, I don't want to say struggles, but their areas for growth, those areas within our individual selves that propel us to another level of consciousness, another level of enlightenment. And here's the thing about relationships, whether they last, you know, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, or a lifetime, every person that enters in our life is often a true benefit for us to heal a deeper part within ourselves. That's right. Every person I believe who enters our life, whether it's for a nanosecond or for a long period of time, it's an opportunity to heal. And when couples actually choose to work through this together, they might find that they might find that they can do this for a lifetime, or they might say, wow, I've healed, and each one of us can go our individual journeys. That's a possibility too. And that's okay. Why I'm saying that's okay is when we get hung up that we have to be with someone forever. You know, I think of my father who just turned 98. My mother passed away six years ago. They were together for 66 years, but he spent the last six years not with her, not with any other relationship. We, you know, the person who goes first gets off easy. <laughs> and this happens for a lot of people in younger years, you know, like in their six, instead of my 80s, like my father, a lot of people lose people in their 60s. And we still have another full, rich life ahead of us. You know, for many people in their 60s, they can live another 20 or 30 years. So if a relationship doesn't work out for you, it doesn't mean you can't find another person to do another set of healing within your life, another shared experiences with one another. So my point of simply bringing this up 
for those of you that feel like there's nobody out there to make you feel good, well, it starts by feeling good within ourselves. And just remember, when you put yourself out there, it is a risk. There's no doubt about it. But it's only a risk if you see it as something bad. It's a really good thing when you put yourself out there because it's an opportunity to grow and heal within yourself. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below. If you like my content, please share this video with your friends. You may want to check out my group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis. I'm shooting this video for my group right now. Send, them, send people to my, or you can go to my website, jonathanasley.com. Click that group coaching button so you can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrog of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.